very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu. I hope you're all in uh, good health. Akhi may M1. Inshallah, inta wa ahla kilkun bi sahab kun inshallah. Um, thank you, brother, for allowing me to speak. It's good to see you guys again. Chris, hope you are doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, uh, basically, my, my story started out like, like before. Um, my name, I changed my name to Nabil al Akhtar because, you know, green is a very, very important color in Islam. It's a very, uh, it's, uh, well, it's basically the most important color in Islam, you know. It signals piousness and purity. And inshallah, I will be try to live my life as pious and as pure as possible. Inshallah. Um, and I changed the name because obviously Pan Arabist is a name that signals somebody who believes in Pan Arab nationalism. And this is ideology. This is not a good ideology, which uh, obviously I have learned in the past uh, the past few months. Alhamdulillah, I have learned. It's an ignorant. It's an ignorant, it's an ignorant uh, ideology. Yes, Echi, made in Brooklyn. I am, uh, my other name was Pan-Arabist. Yes, I don't know if I talked to you before, maybe you had a different name. Okay, excuse me, Ukhti. I, I apologize. Um, I don't recognize the name. Alhamdulillah, yes. Alhamdulillah, yes. Um, so basically, I, I come from a Middle Eastern Christian family. Okay, we were raised Orthodox. A lot of people maybe think Coptic or or Maronite or not this these other sects. Naam, Allahu Akbar. Um, I was raised. This is a they they believe they basically Greek Orthodox. Okay, these different Arab tribes, you know, they they adopted Orthodox Christianity under the ruling Byzantine Empire. And a lot of Orthodox Arabs, they are very proud to be Orthodox. But if they actually read about their history, they're basically forced into it by the by the by the Byzantium, by the Eastern Roman Empire. So, anyways, um, I was very political. I was never really a religious type. I knew about Islam, but I never really ever thought about it from more than a political or historical perspective. Because being is, you know, a person. I supported Palestine, I was very against the Iraq war, I was very anti-Zionism, which of course I still am, I definitely still am, um, but I was, I was, you know, I knew about Islam from that, from that perspective, you know, telling people that, you know, Muslims and Christians and Jews have lived in peace, which they have, and inshallah we all will be able to live in peace. But, no, I was not very racist, <laughs> no, what about Mary, I don't want to go talk, I was not very racist, I never said anything racist. I'll tell you that right now. I was never racist. <laughs> okay? I simply just believed in pan Arabic nationalism. I would never say I was racist, never put down anybody because of their race or anything like that. But uh Alhamdulillah I have learned. I was very ignorant because pan Arabic nationalism I, I come to Pal Talk, I listen to some of these people like Christian Prince and all of that. I never really got involved too much in the, in the dialogue between, you know, religious and all of these different things. But I listen to people say ignorant things like, um, Allah is the moon god, astaghfirullah, or, you know, Muslims hate Jesus, you know, which is obviously not the case at all. Uh, you know, or things like, uh, you know, Arabs hate everybody. Arab, Arab, you know, Islam is only religion for the Arabs, or things like this, you know, things like this, which obviously is not true at all. So I would say in the past maybe few months, I started really examining what I believed in. You know, I I always believe in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but being raised as a Christian, you know, <coughs> it's very confusing because they do not know, they don't know what the Trinity is. You know, in in Arabic we would say go to the Knesset and we would say the church we say we would say Mubarakun He Yil Mems is the kingdom of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. This was not the belong to the kingdom of the Trinity. This is what they say. Yes, this is me. I will be all in the time, yes. You know? But what exactly is the Trinity? You know, I never understood that. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. What exactly is that? And they themselves cannot explain it to you. For the people listening, if there's any Christians in here, 
you cannot explain the Trinity because there is no explanation to it. It's just different stuff put together. They still to this day do not agree who was Jesus and what is the Trinity. If you read the early the the the, 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 the history of Christianity, Council of Nicaea, all of these different things. They used to argue back and forth and fight with each other over who was Jesus. Was he the Son of God? Was he was he just God in the flesh? Who was he? They do not know. That's why you have all these schisms and all these groups labeled, you know, labeled um uh Labeled the heretics like the Coptics and the Nestorian Christians and all of these different things. You know, the Coptics were labeled heretics by, by, by the Byzantium for the longest time. Only in the recent time have they tried to, you know, to, to have some sort of dialogue with each other. So when you read this, could you believe it's like they themselves, you know, nobody can, nobody can explain to who they built the doctrine, who founded the Jews to know. It's, they're just basically telling you believe in something, just have faith, but we really don't know what it's, you know. I, I thought more about that. There's, there's no explanation on this. So I started saying, well, you know, I am a Christian, but I'm a non-Trinitarian Christian. Um, I would say some of well, my family, they, when they came over, they found a lot of Islamic books in my stuff because I grew a beard. I, I did not tell them formally yet, but I'm sure maybe some of them already know because even before I took Shahada, I had the iron head growing a beard. I did not smoke, drink, none of these things. And they got very upset because I had grown a beard. I grew a beard. Oh, they see you. They're going to think you're a terrorist and all of that. But, you know, it didn't really, didn't really matter to me because it's, it's far dying to grow a beard. Why should I care about say, you know? So, as I study more, I, you know, I always like a lot of these ignorant people, you know, so I was a moon because they read about the pagan, the history of the pagan Arabs and, you know, what they used to believe in all of these different things. <coughs> Excuse me. These are so, as I study, I listen, and I used to come on Palpa and listen to certain lectures. I listened to lecture about on what I would how this dunya is nothing. So, you are Arab. Yes, I come Arab. Christian family originally. There are many Arab Christian I've seen the 40, 50 million. They live mostly Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, Jordan. Our Coptic people are not Arabs, but uh, a lot of people label them as Arabs, but they are not. Anyways, um, back to the story. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Excuse me. Anyway, as I come on Pal Talk and sign, you know, I used to listen to lectures, like people like, I used to go to the Islamic room, I think I know a brother, Omar B11, he has a room called Muslim Room, I think I went in there one or twice, and there's other rooms, you know, and there they play lectures by Anwar al-Awlaki, and they give lectures about, you know, uh, Imam, uh, Imam um, Hanbal and all of these different things, and I would listen to them, do you know uh, It'll be a better place, inshallah, because then there will be no reason for Americans and Western peoples to stick their big nose in it. That's what I would think. So, inshallah, the oil will run out very soon, because the only people who live off that oil are the rich, uh, the rich, uh, the rich kings and the, the rich, the rich princes. So, that's what I think about that, Mary. Okay, I apologize, Effie. I apologize. It's very hard to um, <laughs> to see these, this, this, this. What about Mary person? So Alhamdulillah, I used to, you know, come on here and listen to certain people and all that, and lectures and all of that. And I would go to sites like, you know, Kalam Allah and things like that. You know, I got these links from people on here, Alhamdulillah, from people on Pal Talk and things like that. So I learned a lot from these websites. And I would say the last past few weeks, actually, I would say around Christmas time, you know, Christmas here in the West, I would look at these people, actually. And um, I would say, you know, these people are supposed to be celebrating the birth of Christ. You know, this is their, this is, you know, as Christians, they celebrate the birth of Christ. But where is Christ? Where is, where is religion? All of this. All I see is Santa Claus. No, Chris, not you, not you, not everybody. I'm not making a general statement here, but just, you know, the pe a lot of the people, you know. And one thing actually I noticed, you know how in front of, you know how in front of like um, Walmart and Target actually there's those people who ring the red kettle bell for the Salvation Army, you know? And you would see these people come and go, come and go, come and go, and a lot of people would not even put actually not even like a quarter or a nickel or something, but they'd be walking out with these presents, you know, these big TVs and PlayStation 3 and all of that. And they would not even stop to put a nickel or something, you know, for the Salvation Army, you know. They'd spend like maybe $2,000, $3,000 on all these gifts. 
and you see that poor guy, you know, with the Salvation Army, you know, the kettle, and he's ringing it and ringing it, and these people are just, he did this so oblivious to him, you know, even the Salvation Army, you know, I know it's like a, it's a Christian organization all that, but they do help poor people and things like that, you know, and these people won't even give him a nickel, so I started thinking more like, what exactly are these people celebrating, you know? What exactly are these people celebrating? They're not really celebrating anything religious. It's a secular holiday. You know, they're just celebrating Santa Claus and Coca-Cola and PlayStation 3 and all of that. So that got me really thinking, you know. I would say, what am I? What am I in my life, you know? What am I, you know? And I, and, and you know, <clears throat> I started thinking, you know, I do believe in, I do believe in hell and I do believe in heaven. I do believe in an afterlife and I do believe in a day of judgment. I started thinking, you know, what if I die, you know, your life is not, you know, your life is not guaranteed the next day, you know, you could, you could die in your sleep of a heart attack, you'd have a stroke, anything, oh, Adam, anything is possible in this world, so if I were to die, you know, <coughs> as believing, you know, as a, as a person not, test, you know, believing, you know, following the path, you know, following the path that Allah has, has, has laid out and has, these examples from these prophets, you know, Alayhi Salam that he sent to us, you know, I would, you know, I would probably, I would be in hell. I would be in hell. So, I started reading more, started thinking about it more. And I started fasting. I know it sounds weird. I actually, I started fasting from sunset till sunrise. And I think I told a few people, I said, you know, I don't want to eat because I read that, you know, that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam recommended fasting for people who have, you know, having, you know, you know, problems, you know, you know, they want to, you know, they to clear your mind, you know, from any bad thoughts, from any lustful thoughts, from any greed thoughts, you know, you fast. So that's what I did the past, you know, I would say the two weeks I was fasting, and alhamdulillah, I decided that I should, you know, take shahada, I should, I should become a Muslim, alhamdulillah, and I did. And that's basically my story, Akhi. You know, Alhamdulillah, I testify that there is no deity worship of praise except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his prophet and his messenger. He's his final prophet and his final messenger. There is none after him. You know, so all of the Baha'is and all of these different things with their, their, their Baha'i Allah and their Bab Allah and all of that should go back and read read the Quran, read the Hadiths, and rethink, you know, what they believe, you know, because I know there's a few of them on Taltaq, you know, these Baha'i Allahs and all of these different things, and these people are, you know, they're very misguided, and alhamdulillah, I'm glad I never fell for any of their stuff, you know, we are all one, and every religion is, you know, together, and all of this different, uh, it's basically, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's bull crap what, what those people say, so alhamdulillah, I'm very happy. I have found the right path, right path for me and right path for everybody. Not just myself, but every human being. And uh, that's uh, my story, Akhi. I hope uh, I sounded very good on the mic. Um, Akhi, um, what made me choose Ahl sunnah is because, well, you know, in Lebanon we have a lot of uh, Shia Ali. And we have a lot of people from Madhab al-Jafid, you know, Twelvers. And I'm not going to lie, Akhi, at the beginning I will I did... I did, um, I did get Tafsir al Mizan, I started reading Tafsir al Mizan, I started reading, you know, different, like, Shia public, you know, Shia websites, and I went to a site called ShiaChat.com, <laughs> you know, and I would, like, read the websites, and I would see things they would say, and all of that, and I, I, I would say, maybe, these things, what really got me thinking was, why they believe in, you know, in Tawassala, you know, why do they believe in intercession? Why do they believe they can ask their Imams for intercession, you know? This is the same thing that the Christians do, the Catholic and the Orthodox, they go to the, to the, the you know, to Harissa, you know, the big, you know, you know, Tarif al-Harissa, yeah, you know, the big statue of the Virgin Mary, and they leave money, <laughs> they leave like, they leave 50, you know, yeah, in June, they leave money, you know, it's like, it's very paganistic, you know, they leave like money and all of these different things and they will ask, you know, for blessings, like, you know, 
and uh, they will go, you know, they'll do different things like that, you know, so I, that's definitely, that's definitely shirk, and when I looked at the way the Shia would also do these things, they would go to the shrine, you know, of Al Hussein and the shrine of Ali and all of these different things and ask them for intercession. I have, by, I do, Ali radi ta'ala anhu was a great man and his sons were great, you know, men as well. I have nothing against the family. But I have, you know, their, their, their belief, you know, that they can go to the shrines and ask for intercession, you know. These are the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not need anybody to relay a message to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anybody to convey a message to Him. He does not need somebody to intercede, you know. We don't need somebody to intercede seat for us these people these 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 figures are creations of Allah and Allah is above his creation so it's 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 outright shirk that you know these people go and ask you know these figures to you know to intercede on their behalf and also the concept of like muta and the cursing of the sahaba and all of these the hidden imam the imam has been in the cave for you know 1200 years and all of these different things and he is you know Inoculation and all of these different things, I I could not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Do they believe he's naked? I don't know that. I do know they believe he's in well and he's inoculation. I do know that, and that there's a plane, there's a place in Qom, Iran, where he's going to come and reveal himself in a well. That the Mehdi, Imam Mehdi in Muntadar, he's going to appear in from a well. And this place right now in Iran is being built up by uh, a lot of the uh, the Shiite. So that's why one reason actually I could never become, you know, like a person of follow Madhab is Jafri. As for other, you know, groups like, you know, Ishmaili and all of these things. I, these people, they believe in weird things as well. Like they believe the Aga Khan. I was told that they believe, the Ishmaili believe the Aga Khan is, is like... He's holy and that they can bathe in his urine and things like that. So all of these different things, actually, there's too much there's too much esotericism and too much mysticalism and all of these things involved. So Ahl Sunnah, the path you know, the Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, they it just seemed to make sense to me, actually. You have the Quran al Kareem and you have the Hadith. The, there is no none of this esoteric knowledge, none of this dancing around and none of these these different things which very which was seemed very complicated to me and they are very complicated so inshallah actually you you uh, you heard me very good on the mic my mic is not very good but inshallah you, you heard me very good and um i will now give the mic up assalamu alaikum rahmatullah wa barakatuh and i appreciate you guys listening to me okay actually, would you like <coughs> about my family actually I think some of my family I think I did have a cousin he became a Muslim in the 90s he lived in the Gulf and uh, he's a very good guy he's a very good guy and uh, they have negative as they have negative image of him because you know he grew a beard and he lived very pot he lives he lives very piously and all of that so I think maybe they will have this this image of me this this, you know, but it does not matter, you know, to me, actually. The only person, the only, you know, it doesn't matter to me, actually. I have to, I do talk to him, Chris, for you, so I do talk to him, I talk to him about every few days. I don't think my friends will be upset that much. I don't think, there's no reason for them to be upset. I'm not doing anything to hurt anybody, you know. It's funny how people think when somebody, you know, becomes a Muslim that they're going to hurt somebody, you know. It's, it's complete opposite. They should be happy for somebody becomes you know Muslim they should not be sad or anything like that you know these people if they avoid me then they're not really my friends to begin with you know you know actually that's how I feel I feel if they don't they avoid me because of that then they're not really my friends to begin with you know because I'm not hurting anybody I'm not hurting anybody I'm not taking nothing from nobody I'm not attacking anybody you know I think a lot of people have that they that image that you know oh somebody who's you know changes he's going to become negative and all that no you know, I'm not, I'm, I definitely don't, don't, you know, I have no reason for them to avoid me. But if they do, you know, Allah alam, you know, I cannot, you know, lose sleep over it or anything. Mm. 
Yes, Chris, you are very correct. Travel Buds is one of these trolls. I've seen him in the other room. He comes in the other room and he starts telling people he, he's gay, but he wants to become a Muslim. You know, stick for a lot. He's a troll. I'll tell you that right now, Ashley. I've seen him in other rooms before. He's like that one guy, Mr. London. You know, he's just coming out to play around. You know? Travel Buds, man. He just, he just a troll. You know? Travel Buds, you were in that room for a long time. I, I, I watched your text. You're just a joker. You're just a joker. You know? So if, um, and uh, that's, you know, like I said, they avoid me, you know? They weren't really my friends to begin with. If anybody feels negatively about this, then they really don't care about me. That's how I do, you know? It's a, it's a shame that people rather, you know, look down on somebody who wants to to become that they don't have a problem with people drinking, doing drugs, smoking, fornicating, you know. It's you know, it's almost it's, it's seen as a bad thing to become religious. But it's seen as a different you know, all these filthy things. It's a shame. This is the kind of world we live in. As I said yesterday, there's a you know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Islam came as something strange and it will return as something strange. You know, the believers will be looked at as strange. And the kuffar will be looked at as the norm because they are the norm. You know, they are the majority in a lot in most. You know, in America, Canada, a lot of these uh, countries. You know, and they will look at the person who's a believer that he is strange, that he is weird. But it's okay. You know. So, inshallah, I have answered your questions, and if you have any more questions for me, I will be happy to answer them. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel very good, Akhi. Alhamdulillah, I feel very good. I do have a bit of a cold, but, uh, you know, I think this is from maybe, you know, being, uh, you know, in the holidays and all of that, being around people who are sick and things like that. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to make some yin soon, you know, that's the best thing. Drink some yin soon, eat some labne, <laughs> that's the best thing, you know. I am sorry if it's hurting, I, I apologize. I don't know how to fix my mic anymore, so I apologize to you. I will, uh, I'm sorry for hurting your ears. Uh, mic free. Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asha'Allah, akhi, I'm, um, uh, wallahi, I'm taken by your adab, akhi, nabil. Barakallahu feek wa ahsanak. Jazakallah khair for, for your, uh, uh, time. And thank you so much. Always a pleasure and honor to have you here. Um, Subhanallah. Uh, I had a lot of questions in mind, uh, but wallahi, they just kind of seem to be taken away by the distraction uh, from uh, travel buds and the likes of him. Anyhow, anyone has a question for the brother at all? Any Muslim want to ask him a question, a question in mind? But they all look ugly with this beard and doesn't make you look more intelligent. On the contrary, you look like a caveman. Well, there's a lot of Americans with beards. Does that make him caveman as well? If you live in America, that's a freedom of choice. You believe in freedom of choice. Uh, what about Mary? Or they have to uh, be looking exactly as your standard of uh, Gillette uh, company. Gillette. Yeah, how about uh, Santa Claus? <laughs> Allah was that. All right, oh my goodness, the recording was still going, let me pause it. Jazakallah khair, akhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all the brothers and sisters in the room and welcome to our dear guests. I hope I am being heard because uh, my headset is kind of uh, messing with me. Inshallah, I am being heard. Um, even though I don't hear myself because the cord is broken. Anyways, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate our brother. Uh, welcome to Islam, inshallah. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, always guide you and strengthen you, inshallah. And may you become a great Dawi, inshallah. I mean, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm a revert myself. 
uh, approximately three years ago. Alhamdulillah. I'm also a an ex-Orthodox. Actually, my mother was uh, is an Orthodox Christian. My father is Catholic, but I chose. Uh, no, she's from Romania, but I was uh, baptized in a Syriani church, not a Syrian, but Syriani. You know, Assyrians, Syrianis. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, I I was a um, Islam. Yeah, I, I was an Islam hater before because they fed me um, a bunch of lies about um, Islam and they were all based upon lies and um, so, I, so I had these strange ideas about Islam. But anyway, um, Orthodox, th this is the thing I want to ask you actually because um, uh, as I told you, I mean, I grew up with uh, Syriani Orthodox Christians and uh, Yugoslavian Orthodox Christians and Greeks and whatnot, and they're also very, very against Islam. Now, I don't know about your family. You might have, mashallah, uh, tolerant and, and understand family, but this is this is a question. Uh, how did your family take it? Or the it? Uh, do you see that you're thinking logic now? That you're I any? Mean, you know, like more than more than ever that you're a Muslim. I just want to ask you, like, how family situation, how is your family taking it? Uh, Jazakallah. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for that question, man. It's very good. The first one I say, I know who you're talking about, the Assyrian. The Syrian, the wouldn't be Assyrian. The Akhid, they're not really Assyrians. Um, these people were just basically Aramean-speaking Christians, and in the 19th century, when the British came and started the activities in the, the Middle East, they gave all these people, they said, well, you are an Assyrian, you are a Chaldean, you are this and that. They really are not Assyrian. They have no link to ancient Assyria. They speak Neo-Aramaic. Um, I apologize. Let me just, please, actually, please forgive me for this. Let me just tell this person what to call me. Huh. Um, as I was saying um, to Brother Yaz, these, like you mentioned, the Suryani people, Assyrian people, uh, these people are not really Assyrian. They have no link to the ancient Assyrian. They're basically just Arame Aramaic speaking Christian, Neo Aramaic, by the way, Aramaic speaking Christian. And they were given these labels by the British and, you know, different people like that. So I, I had a debate with one of them the other day on, on Pal Talk and, uh, and I used sources. Mm, not really mixed with Turks. They're basically different people. Some of them were originally Kurdish that became Christian, you know, and they became, you know, they, they became Aramized. The term is Aramized, you know. So different, they're just they're, you know different ethnic groups mixed together. They're linked by their you know their their Syriac liturgy. You know they use Syriac in their church. That's basically it. That's their identity. All of them are bad. Some of them have. There's actually a few of them who have become Muslim. There's actually in uh, Lebanon there's a group of Assyrian Muslims. I forgot the exact term for them. And there's also a few in Turkey and all of these different things. So not, you know, I don't want to generalize all of them, but many of them, they can be haters. Um, uh, as you mentioned, at Orthodox, I think a lot of Orthodox, you know, like in Syria, and, and, and a lot of these, have, you know, they have negative outlooks of history. They mix politics with religion. You know? My family, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we, my family, anti-Islam like in any way, you know? They had, my father and my mother had many Muslims. I was really told it's bad about Islam. 
my father he was a very big nationalist he still is a big nationalist and he fought with a group called Al-Hizb Al-Qawm Al-Sur Al-Ijtima'i which is the Syrian Socialist Nationalist Party do you know who they are? I'm one of the Qawmiyin Tahya Surya they were around screaming Tahya Surya you know so these people you know they are very secular they don't there's they're you know they're made up of Christian Muslim there's a lot of different you know religion they're a very secular group so you know I never, we never, my, my family never had really anything against people who follow Islam, but, you know, because in Lebanon, you know, there's different factions, you know, there's nationalists who are secular, there's the right wing who are very, you know, hardcore, want to be Lebanon to be a Christian nation, those are mostly Maronites, see, in, in the Arab world, the Orthodox, usually you will find them to be nationalists, like the Orthodox, he was an Orthodox Christian. I'm sorry, I actually have it enabled. I apologize, actually. I don't know what's wrong with this mic. Let me see if I can turn it up. I apologize. Let's turn it up all the way. You know, so in Lebanon, you have, like, let me explain, you know, you have two factions. You have the right wing and the left wing. A lot of Orthodox are on the left wing. Like, for example, Michel Aflaq, he was an Orthodox from Syria. He founded the Ba'ath Party. Um, or Anton Saidi was also Orthodox from Syria. He founded the SSNP. So they are mostly nationalists. I was raised like very nationalistic. That's why my name is to be panist. So I don't think I'm not really raised with anti is like, you know. What? Some of the, well, and, and I have, you know, that's the, like, you know, I don't want to go Arab national no more, but I would really like to see the art to be painted because that's how people, how people attack. Look at it all, you know, all the different Arab nations, let, let all be it. But also at the same time, you know, it's also a thing for all Muslims, all people, you know. You don't have, to, I don't think you have to be a Muslim, you know, or, you know, Arab or anything to disagree with the war in Iraq. You know? Um, so, I didn't really have any anti-Islamic upbringing, you know, from my secular, you know, my secular, you know, family and all of that. But I do think some of them might be upset when I tell them. I have not really told them yet, but I do think they have a they have they have a clue because when they came over before they found many Islamic they found Islamic books on my table when I was studying them. And I grew a beard, I grew a big beard even before I took Shahada, I grew a big beard like they were saying, you know, Oh, why are you growing a beard? You're looking like a terrorist. Now when you go to the airport they're gonna stop you. And anyways, I would be stopped at the airport regardless. <laughs> You know, they were like, well, can we randomly check you? And I'd be like, you know, okay. Now, this is, you know, that always happened before anyway, you know. If you're from the Middle East, they're going to check you regardless, you know. No, please don't say that, Christopher Yusua. Don't joke around like that, please. That's not funny. Yeah, you know, you shouldn't joke like that. You know. So, I hope, Echi, um, yeah, as I have answered your question for you, I don't think, but I have, I have a, I have a cousin. He became Muslim. He became Muslim in the 90s, like I said before. He lived in the Gulf. I think he lived in in, in Qatar or in Bahrain, one of the Gulf countries. But he's a Sunni, so I, I tend to think it's Qatar because Bahrain is mostly Shia. So I don't think you know he he probably would have been a Shia if he embraced it in Bahrain. So I think he it was in Qatar, and they looked down on him because he grew a beard. And you know he 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 was living you know very piously and all of that different things. So I think maybe they will have some negative outlook. They will have some negative viewpoints of me. But you know I'm not gonna let it get to me. Actually, it does not matter to me. You know what they think of me. I, I will always be respectful towards them. But I don't really think. You know, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to care too much if they don't like it. You know, it's not hurting anybody. I'm not doing drugs or anything like that. You know. These people are funny, you know, they rather somebody be a drug addict or, you know, smoking, you know, whatever, or fornicating than somebody become religious, mm -hmm. you know, that's their mindset, unfortunately, I have a lot of people, but, you know, I'm not going to let it get to me, so, inshallah, I have answered your question very well, Akhi, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, uh, brother Pan, right, I just want to ask you, bro, um, do you think that your Muslim cousin, um, could help you, yeah. and um, would kind of, I don't know, guide you, or um, like put you under his wing or whatever, you know?
We'll set it on the mic so it can be recorded, bro. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Actually, I tell him every few days, and he does give me a lot of advice and a lot of, you know, encouragement and things like that. So yes, um, I do think, you know, he definitely can, you know, learn a lot from him and have learned a lot from him so far. So definitely, yes, uh, Chris for Yeshua. And um, inshallah, Allah will allow me to 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 be, to be a Muslim the best of my abilities. You know, I'm only human. Everybody's, you know, we're all only human, but, you know, inshallah, we will, we will live our lives as, as good Muslims, like free. <laughs> okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hayak Allah, Akhi Nabil. Hayak Allah, welcome all to the room. Akhi, uh, what was your thought and opinion of the Muslims uh, in Pal Talk when you first joined? I mean, obviously Islam wasn't on your mind, but uh, have you ever got engaged in, in their um, debates? Have Obviously, you, uh, I'm not sure how long you've been in, in Pal Talk, but uh, what was your opinion? Okay, what was your opinion of the Dawa room and the rooms that you visited? Have you ever uh, been engaged in any debates, dialogue between you two? Uh, I'd like to get your input. Tafadal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's a very good question. Uh, when I, come up, I used to start using public about two years ago. And there's this, I think there's still in this room called Islam Answers Back. I would go into that room and listen to them. And there was a very good guy in there. I think his name was um, Abu Layth, if I'm not mistaken. You know, forgive me. I, his name, I know it has Layth in it, Abu Layth, something of that nature. And I would listen to him. And uh, he was a very good guy, you know, very, very polite for if, 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 I don't think it was Abdul, I think his name was just Abdul I don't think it was Abdul but I know he was in the Islam Answers back room. And I have not talked to him for a while. I remember he was a very good, uh, very good guy, very polite, very respectful. And he used to give me, you know, he'd ask me questions and all that, and I would say, you know, can everything he would say, you know, about the uh, Trinity and things of that nature, and you know, I did learn a good amount from him. There's also other rooms like ones that you know I don't know I guess you would call them Salafi rooms <laughs> or exposing Salafi exposing the Talafi uh, or you know things of that nature and I, I, I do know they still have many of these rooms and I was talking to some of these I guess I guess you would call them Salafis I don't you know want to label anybody all that I know some of them were actually <laughs> they actually pretty negative they're actually pretty negative. They used to like to say, may Allah guide you or break your back, you know? Which kind of seems to me, you know, may Allah do or break your back. I mean, that, 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 uh, that kind of, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, it's very negative, but I mean, I, I could understand the way. They seem to be very angry at certain things. And I could understand with them, you know, war in Iraq or, you know, in Afghanistan, all that. I, 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 I grew up things they would say. Didn't agree with the way they would talk, you know. They would say, you know, they would be pretty negative. Some of them were pretty, pretty disrespectful, you know. Um, you know, saying that you should be very harsh with the unbelievers and show them no respect, you know. You know, different things of that nature, which did not make much sense to me. If you want to make dawah to somebody, you have to, it seemed to me you would approach them from a, from a respectful manner. You know, you don't want to make somebody angry at you when you're trying to, you know, trying to teach them. Yeah, you know, like they would say, you know, um, the mother of all kuffar are, you know, dirty or things like that, you know, and nobody's going to want to talk to you, nobody's going to listen to you if you call their mother, you know, bad things, you know, even if, even if they have, you know, disagreement with their mother's religion or whatever, you know, don't insult their mother and stuff like that, you know, so, it seemed to me that they were, they are very, they were very harsh in their dawah, you know, so that's what struck, you know, I noticed about them, but there's, alhamdulillah, there's many nice Muslims on here, there's many nice ones, you know, some of them, they would, they didn't talk to religion at all, you know, I was just noticed they were very polite and all of these different things, you know, we talked politics and mostly focused like on Zionism, Palestine, you know, why the Palestinian people, you know, why nobody's helping them, 
why the West is so against, you know, Palestine, all of these different things. No, Omar, I'm saying these are different people. These are people, not not the, not the Dabu, I'm talking about other things. Um, so, I have a pretty positive, you know, I have a positive, pretty positive experience with people on Palpak, Muslims. But, like, for all, you know, a lot of people on Palpak are very crazy, you know. So, if there was bad people, I really took them with a grain of salt because I would figure they were just having problems in their life. They come on Palpak. There was one guy. He was from Iran. He was a Baluchi guy. Uh, his name was Muhammad is back, one, two, three. You know, I don't want, you know, I don't want, he's not in the room. Maybe somebody here knows him. That guy was, he considered himself to be a Salafi. And, oh man, that guy was, he would attack, attack, and attack. Oh, you Lebanese, this, you Lebanese are filthy. All Lebanese should be beheaded. I, you know, I love when Israel bombed, you know, all these different things, you know. He, he's probably the one that stuck out to me the most as the weirdest, the most crazy. But, you know, inshallah, you know, he, he gets his mind together. His, also, his name is Kufar Behave. He has a few names. Muhammad is back, one, two, three, and Kufar Behave. He probably comes in here. You probably know him as another name. You know, but uh, thank you for allowing me to speak, Mike Free. Hey, uh, I want to say that I'm glad that you found your path. Um...